Hey everyone, welcome to Signal Processing with Paul. In this video, what I'm gonna do is show the basics of plotting and storing signals here in Python. I'll also do this in MATLAB, but not everyone has access to MATLAB. MATLAB can be kind of expensive. And if you're using Python, because you can download it for free, if you use the Anaconda Package Manager, basically you can, you can just have all the packages that you'll need for this. And I'll provide a link to this Python notebook in the comments. So let's go ahead and get started. What I'll do to start out is I need to import NumPy so we can actually store numbers. So I'm gonna import it NumPy as numNP. I'm going to import matplotlib.pyplot as plt. This is very standard so we can plot things. And later on, I'm also gonna use scipy. So I'll import scipy as well. Now let's define a few things. We wanna plot cosine of two times pi times f times t from t equals minus one to one. Now, if you remember in our video um, on theory, time is a continuous variable and amplitude is a continuous variable. So we can't store either of these in a computer, but we can approximate this as close as possible. So this cosine will already be approximated to some extent when we call the cosine function, and that, but the t's will have to do ourselves. So the best way to do this, or the way I like doing this, is defining a minimum t and a maximum t like this. What I'm also going to do is define a frequency, which is going to be, let's do just do two for now. And what I'll do is define my t, actually, let me do this up here. We'll define t as numpy dot lin space. Now this means linear space, so equally spaced points from minus one to one and what I wanna do is have a lot of them because I wanna plot this pretty precisely to basically emulate what we would be doing when we're sampling. So this would be emulating a, a real valued signal even though we don't actually have any sort of real valued things. So what I'm gonna say is t, or let's just say num t is a thousand, that's quite a bit. And for here, when we do our lin space, we'll just put t min, t max. So it'll be going from minus one to one. And by default, it has 50 spaces, but we want more. So I'm just gonna plop num t in there. Now what we can do is write our function of t. So this value here is actually a vector of a thousand units. So keep that in mind. And also it doesn't really matter what your time units are. This is stored internally. You just need to be consistent and remember. So you can think of this T as representing seconds, but this program won't, uh, it won't store it for you. So you have to keep that in mind and remember that what you're using. And um, we'll, we'll talk about that in a moment what, where that can become an issue. So we define our time units. We define our frequency. Now we can go about defining our signal. So X of T is going to equal numpy dot cosine two times numpy dot pi times F times t. And notice how these guys are all scalars. These are all just numbers. np.pi, that's just pi. And t is a vector. So what it's going to do is it's going to take the element-wise cosine of 2 times pi times f times basically this value of t we have from here. So to plot this signal, what I can do is say plt.plot. And I'll plot from t t is my x value basically, and x of t is my amplitude or my y value. So let's make these labels to show this. So plt.x label is going to be t, plt.y label is going to be amplitude, and the plt.title is going to be plot of cosine of two times times two, or f times t looking good, we run it, and here's what you see. Now, if you remember, we defined our frequency f as basically being two. So what we're seeing here is in a single unit of time, so from zero to one, we see two cycles of the cosine wave, which is exactly what we expect to see. And we're going to use this, even though it's stored in the computer and it is you know, sampled and quantized and all of this, to represent the signal that we are sampling. So this is what's really going on when we sample a signal. The first thing we wanna do is create a sampling period or a sampling frequency. And in order to not get aliasing, this needs to be at least twice of the maximum frequency we wanna represent, because this is, has to do with the Nyquist rate. So this frequency here is two, so we wanna have this at least be four. So I'm just gonna pick five, a nice round number. So we're gonna say fs equals five. And this is saying that we're going to have five 
cycles per second. So we can, we'll also have our sampling period and this will be more useful for messing around with is gonna be one over our sampling frequency. So while as five, this is in cycles per second, the time, the, the period here is one divided by the cycles per second. So this will tell you the time of a single sampling interval basically. So this is like the rate of samples. This is the time. And to create the pulse train that we're gonna use for sampling, where basically you can use lin space again, but I prefer using a range because a range actually allows you to specify the sampling period rather than having to calculate it out. So it's a fun exercise to, to try to figure out how to do this with lin space, but I find this is a little bit easier. So I'm not trying to get too complicated right now. So we'll say pulse train equals numpy dot a range. We're gonna put our t min and our t max in here, except this time I'm going to pass my a range. Basically this value is the sort of rate and this is going to be my sampling period. So this is the basically the spacing between samples from minimum to maximum. So here it's gonna be one over five, boom, 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 boom. And to plot what our pulse train looks like, what this will look like here is, we'll just say plt.plot the pulse train indices, and then we'll just put ones here to plot what it looks like. So this will be the length of pulse train. Actually, not to, we're not gonna use plot, I'm gonna use stem, and this will show that it's a digital signal. So here, when we use plot, it actually connects the dots. So what's really going on here in this plot is it's a bunch of points and they're connected by lines, which is why it looks continuous. But to show that these are digital samples that aren't really interpolated in any way, we're gonna use the stem plot here. So we run this and this is what our pulse train looks like. You can see from minus one to zero, we have one, two, three, four, five, actually, five and then zero starts the next period. So we have 10 samples here and we're gonna be sampling our signal by multiplying by this pulse train at each of these points. So the best way to do this is we can take our original function, except instead of using T, we're going to use our pulse train that was sampled at these particular points. So rather than T, we're gonna be grabbing the signal at those points. So what I'll say here is using the stem plot, XT, sampled is going to be numpy.cosine, and here what we're going to use is our pulse train. So to show this the stem plot, we're going to say plt.stem, and once again, we wanna make sure we, we put in our pulse train for our x values and our xt sampled for our y values. So here you go. And here's what we see. These are the sampled values corresponding to this cosine wave. Now it's really important that you put in these, these pulse train values because if you don't, what can happen is this actually re-indexes your signal according to the sample number. So what it's going to think is that this value here goes from zero to 10. So it's gonna place these here and by re-indexing your sequence, you have a sine wave of a different frequency, which is not what you want. So that's why it's really important to also specify your X value as addition to your Y value so it knows where these correspond. And that'll be especially important because if we wanna plot the original signal on top of it, we wanna make sure that these things are lined up. So we'll plot, plt.plot will do T and X of T and let me make uh, this one red so we can see them a little bit differently. So here is my sine wave in red, the original signal, and these balls, the stem plot, is going to correspond to the sampled version of this. So notice how we're precisely grabbing the values that we want. Once again, if we didn't index this correctly, you would have a problem. It would, it would do something completely different that you don't want it to do. So be sure you're consistent with those axes. I can't stress that enough. So this is what we see. Now, going back from our sampled signal to the time domain is pretty simple. What we want to do is basically interpolate between these points to recover our original signal. Now, the best way to do this is using this scipy.signal.resample. We'll talk about how to do this, how to do signal recovery in the Fourier domain and the time domain later. Um, but I, in this video, what I want to do is just show how you can sample a signal and then recover it and why storing it in a computer is so effective. So what I'm going to do is say my resampled X. So this is my sampled X and my resampled um, basically time series is going to be, I'm going to put my XT sampled. I want a thousand points 
And now we need to put the points that this was sampled at. So this is now going to be the corresponding X values here. So this is going to be my pulse train. So I'm resampling this value, which it can tell that it has only 10 points because that's what it what we found here because of our sampling frequency. We're, we want this to have a thousand points and these original points were evaluated at these indices. So we do this and if I run this, now I can basically plot it. We'll do T, R, S and X, R, S like so. And the other thing we can do is basically <laughs> plot on top. We want to do T and X of T. Let's do this in orange and maybe I'll put it, oh, I want to do it. Well, I don't want to do it, uh, do it like that. Maybe like, oops. Unfortunately, what it's doing, what I'm trying to do, I want it to be dashed, but I forget how to do this. But anyway, you can see that what's going on here is it's plotting both of these on top of each other, which is which is what we want. Um, so we've recovered our signal directly, which is great. Now, what happens here when we resample a signal that is not at the Nyquist rate? So one of the things we could do, of course, is by changing our our frequency to be above or at the Nyquist rate. So let me just set this to be seven. Our Nyquist rate is five. So the maximum frequency you can represent is 2.5. So this is way above the Nyquist rate. This is not what you want to do. And let's see what happens. So we plot our signal. Notice how it's a much higher frequency because now we're plotting 7.5. And now we define, we use the same sampling frequency as before. And when we, when we show our plots here, um, on top, we're still sampling it okay at these points. But one of the things you'll notice is when we do the interpolation, it actually thinks it's a much lower frequency signal because it's playing connect the dots and it notices that basically what, what it's doing. And, you know, I'm using all this, this conscious agency to the Fourier transform. It's just doing what we're asking it to do. But it's noticing that it can actually connect the dots in this way in a much more simple way with a lower frequency signal. And this is what aliasing looks like. So when I plot my resampled signal, I get something that's much lower frequency. And when I plot the original signal on top of it, oh, now it's working. Of course, you know, <laughs> now it works. Um, you can, you can kind of see what's going on here. It's a much lower frequency signal than our original signal. And this is what happens when you have aliasing. So it's really important to meet that Nyquist rate so you're not running into this issue. Of course, we can just always go back here and define this now as 20. Now we take a lot more points. You can see this is where it's grabbing it from. Now, <laughs> cool shape. And now when you plot it, boom, it's able to do it. So hopefully this explains how we represent signals digitally, how we can recover them using the Fourier transform. This is really important stuff. And uh, Go ahead, like this video, subscribe, and, and if you have any questions or maybe the best thing for you to do is just play around with this notebook. I'll, I'll have a link for it so you get an intuition for how sampling works. All right, have a good one.